Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. Today I'm going to be doing something I've never done before. I'm going to be making a Sauvignon Blanc wine from a kit. Now I've never used a wine kit in my life. I've always thought that they were a bit of a cheat. But I was in the uh, Wilco's shop the other day and I just saw one and thought, do you know what? I'm just going to give it a try. So today's key ingredients are two litres of spring water, 450 grams of brewing sugar, and of course the Sauvignon Blanc wine kit from Wilco's. The wine kit comes with various sachets. I've got sachet A wine yeast, sachet B neutrofine, sachet C wine stabiliser, and then some finings for clearing. Now I'm going to try and follow the instructions as much as possible, but if I see something I disagree with or don't like, then I'm going to do it my way. And if that happens, I'll let you know as I'm doing it. So to begin with, I'm going to add two litres of water into this saucepan. And at this point, I need to tell you, I'm already doing it my way. Because the kit says to add 1.8 litres of water. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never come across a 1.8 litre bottle of water before. So I've just decided to go with two litres, which is going to be easier, rather than saving a bit. And I've already spotted why 1.8 litres might have been better. And that's because my pan's not big enough. Change of pan required. So a quick swap of saucepans. So I've got my water in the saucepan and I'm going to do something else now which it tells you not to do. It tells you to add cold water to begin the wine, but to put the brew sugar in cold water. Now I know that brew sugar dissolves easily but it won't all dissolve if I put it in cold water and I will end up with some brew sugar just sat in the bottom of the demijohn. So I'm going to slightly warm this water and stir the brew sugar into the warmed water and that will mean it does dissolve. So the water that I'm going to add to the kit will be slightly warm. It won't be hot, it'll just be a few degrees warmer than body temperature probably. So in goes the sugar, on goes the heat. I'm just going to stir this. It will dissolve quickly, it will only need to be on for a couple of minutes. So I'm just uh, sanitising my demijohn, which is today's fermentation vessel of choice. So it's a standard one gallon Boots demijohn from the 1970s, the war horse of home brewing. The brew sugar has literally been in the pan for about 1 minute and 30 seconds and with heat and stirring that's all dissolved. So I'm simply going to pour the sugar water into the demijohn via a funnel. So I've just got to open the kit now. Let's have a look in there. So, so if you've ever wondered, that's what the inside of a wine kit looks like. Looks a bit like treacle. Hopefully not quite as sticky. So I'm going to add the wine kit into the demijohn. It is quite syrupy and thick. It does come out pretty well though. I don't feel like I need to rinse the tin out. Right, let's have a look at my demijohn. It looks very nice and clear. The instructions say to give it a little swirl around. I see no harm in that. Got it to my thermometer on here. It's currently 22. I need to take the original gravity at 20. So I'm going to pour some into the hydrometer tube and that's going to go in the fridge for just five minutes. It's a cold fridge. So I'm going to pop this in the fridge and then get back on with the wine. So the instructions say now to add the contents of wine yeast A and neutrophine B. So let's do that. Then I'm going to add Nutrifine B. So I'm guessing this is some kind of uh, yeast nutrient. Because that's now all clumpy and lumpy. We don't like clumpy and lumpy. So I'm going to give it a swizzle round. Airlock, this needs to go in, so please excuse the comedic appearance of my airlock. This is what happens when you buy a cheap uh, 
199 airlock off eBay and then put it in the dishwasher. But it still actually works, so for the comedy value of its appearance it is still a functioning airlock. I'm going to place that in the top. I'm going to leave this and come back to it in a little while. Okay, I've got the wine must down to 20 degrees. Let's dip the hydrometer in. And that is an extremely healthy starting gravity. The highest I've ever seen. 1.130. Wow, I have never seen a starting gravity that high before. So this is now going to sit um, for a few days. I think it says two days or three days before being topped up with more spring water. So that's what I will do. And I'll need to take the gravity again at that point. So I'll be back uh, with the next instalment of film in a few days time. Uh, you can see already the ring that's appeared here, which means that that's the early stages of a Krausen considering forming. And you can also see in the airlock that the pressure is building. So there must be some CO2 being created now. And this has only been in here for about 10 minutes. In fact, that is going to bubble actually. So that's pretty good. So I'll be back in a few days time. See you then folks. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. It's stage two of my Sauvignon Blanc, which is adding some water and taking the gravity. So I need to take what is the interim gravity. It's the middle gravity in between the first stage of fermentation and the second stage of fermentation. So the interim gravity is what we're at now after a couple of days of, of fermenting. That will tell me what alcohol percentage this mixture is. Now I'm going to add to that spring water, which will dilute it. So then I need to work out what the diluted uh, alcohol percentage is with the spring water added also. I then need to take another gravity reading after I've added the spring water to determine what the restarting gravity is before I then leave this to finish fermentation. I hope you're with me on this. Don't worry, I'm going to write some numbers down and demonstrate it to you. But it is a quite a complicated uh, thing if you've never done it before. Now, interestingly, the instructions from Wilco don't tell you to take these interim gravities, but that's wrong because you're diluting the alcohol. So you can't go from what was 1.130 to the end gravity without looking at what you've done in between. So I need to take the bung out and I'm going to pour some of this must into my sanitised hydrometer tube. Smells nice. And I'm going to take the gravity now. So at this point in time, I'm on a gravity of exactly 1.100. So that's good. So 1.100. So just to work this out. So I started off on a gravity of 1.130. I deduct from that where I am now, which is 1.110, and that equals 0.02. I multiply this by 131.25, and that equals 2.625%. So at this point in time, after two days, my Sauvignon Blanc is 2.625%. However, that's going to be diluted now, as I'm going to add some spring water. Now I need to measure how much spring water is going in there. So I'm using a measuring jug, which has also been sanitised. And I'm going to begin by putting what I think is about a litre on there. I'm on 900 mil. I'll top it up to 1400 mil. Because I think that's going to be near enough. Just a bit more. In fact, let's make it 1500, a nice round number. Let's not mess about. Waste not, want not. It has been sanitised, so let's get that back in. And now I'm going to add my 1500ml of water. Now the instructions say to boil water, let it cool and pour it in. I honestly can't see the point in doing that when I can just put spring water in. Now I've not filled it right to the top, just in case a Krausen does form. After a couple of days of fermenting it's unlikely that I'm going to get a large Krausen. Should I gamble with a little bit more? Go on, let's gamble with a little bit more. If the worst comes to the worst and I do get a large Krausen, then what I'll do is I'll put a blow off pipe in and I'll have to lose a bit. 
So this is a further 200 mil. So that means I'm adding 1700 mil, 1 1.7 litres. Well, that's taken me right to the top. So I do need to watch this carefully now. Now it hasn't formed a large Krausen at all as yet, it's just been uh, active on the surface and I'm hoping that will be the case from this point onwards. But I've got to bear in mind now that I've put 1.7 litres of water in here, 1700 ml. I've put my airlock back in and yeah, it's going to start to go again just fine. You can just see that. My crooked airlock. In fact, I've missed a stage out because now I've added the water, I need to take the restarting gravity. Forgot that bit. So let's get the airlock back out. Calculated. So the restarting gravity for this is 1.052. Now I'm going to put my bung back in. So I'm just going to give my damage on a rinse under the hot water tap. I'm going to get all the sticky bits and bobs off it. So I've got my restarting gravity on there. What I want to do now is work out the alcohol percentage of this, what it currently is. Right folks, I've got a bit of maths to do now in terms of working out where we are with ABVs, diluted ABVs, interim gravities and potential final gravities. Let's have a look at some PowerPoint. So here is the interim ABV for the Sauvignon Blanc as it currently stands. So the original gravity was 1.130 and the interim gravity that I just took was 1.110. So to work out the interim ABV prior to me adding spring water, I take 1.130, I deduct from that 1.110 and I multiply that figure by 131.25 and that tells me that after two days fermenting, my Sauvignon Blanc has got to 2.65%. I then need to work out what the dilution percentage is. So this is what the dilution percentage is. The Demijohn holds one imperial gallon, which is eight pints, or to you metric people, 4.54 litres. I'm going to work in metric because I think most people do these days. After adding the spring water, I need to work out how much wine was in the Demijohn prior to adding the spring water. So if I added 1.7 litres to the Demijohn to fill it, there must already have been 2.84 litres of liquid in there because 4.54 minus 1.7 equals 2.84. I then need to work out as a percentage what the 1. litres of spring water is against the 2.84 litres of wine that was already in the Demijohn. The equation for this is 1.7 divided by 2.84 multiplied by 100. And that means that it was 59.8% uh, of the amount added again, or let's just say 60% just to round it up and make life easier. So now I need to look at the diluted ABV. So I need to recalculate the ABV of the wine after it's been diluted with spring water. So if I diluted the wine by 60% by adding 1.7 litres of spring water, I therefore need to dilute the ABV accordingly by 60%. So the equation for this is 60 divided by 100 times 2.65, 2.65 being the alcohol by volume that it currently is. That means that the diluted ABV for this wine is 1.59. So my wine ABV after dilution is therefore 1.59%. So that full Demijohn with the spring water in it is now at 1.59% only. So going forward now, I'm just considering what this could finish at in terms of a final alcohol by volume. So I retook the gravity, the restarting gravity at 1.052. If I deduct from that the final gravity, the best case scenario that I can get is that it finishes on 0 0.990. Now it probably won't finish that low, but if that is the case, then I'd work out the ABV for the second stage of fermentation by taking 1.052 and deducting from it 0 0.990 multiplying this by 131.25, which equals 8.13%. So the highest ABV that my wine can finish at is by adding this figure to the percentage of the wine that's already in the Demijohn, which equals 9.72%. That is the best percentage I can hope for with this wine. Now, Wilco claim that this kit 
should achieve a final ABV of 12%, but I have to say that just isn't true, and here's the maths to prove it. Let's see what happens. I hope you followed me on that. Well done if you did. Okay, I've got the wine back on. 1.59% plus 1.052 and whatever it finishes at, labelled on the Demijohn. I will be back in a couple of weeks time when fermentation's over and it's the next stage of the brew, which is probably going to be clearing, although I might do it my way and go straight to bottle. Let's just see. Catch you then, folks. Good evening from the kitchen, folks. It's Sauvignon Blanc bottling night. Let's have a look at it. So here it is, it's been in the Demijohn for three weeks. It's completely and utterly stopped fermenting and it's cleared itself so I don't even need to worry about putting finings in. So I've decided to throw a caution to the wind and do it my way. So I'm going to be making a sparkling Sauvignon Blanc instead. So in order to give my Sov a sparkle, I need to add some extra sugar for priming. So this is priming sugar, just standard sugar. I'm adding the equivalent of a good generous heaped teaspoonful into each 750ml bottle. And what this will do is any yeast which is left in suspension in there will eat that sugar. It will increase the ABV by a fraction, I mean a tiny amount, but it will produce CO2 which will create pressure and that is why it will give it bubbles. So it's bent bung out. Siphoning tube in. I'm holding the tube steady with this handy clip. The bottom is a millimetre or so above the sediment line, which means I will get some out initially, but the first bit that comes out is going into the hydrometer tube. So let's ding dang do it. And into the bottles we go. Well, it smells like dry white wine. That's a good sign. So I've got five 750s just about to be filled. There's a bit left in the Demijohn. I'm going to try and fill a 500. If I can't, I'll decant it into a smaller bottle. And it turns out today, I will. That's it. I'm not risking any more. I don't want any sediment. That's pretty damn good. I'm happy with that. So before I go any further, let's have the dip test with the hydrometer for the final gravity. See where we've ended up. And in fact, this has finished on a final gravity of 0 0.990. Brilliant. So there's my bottles. Now they need the tops button on. So as far as the champagne bottles go, I'm going to use plastic bungs. These have been sitting in very hot water, which makes them a bit more malleable and easy to work with. And I usually wear a glove these days, but I forgot. So let's see what happens. One. Ah, it's a brick wall. Okay, that one's not going. I'll try a different bung. Some of these bottles have got slightly narrower necks, which are problematic. Yeah, it isn't going to take it. I'm going to have to use a different kind of bung with that bottle. Unfortunately, and I have used that before with these kind of bungs, but it's just the game you play. Hit and miss. That one's played ball. Oh, now I wish I had my glove on because that bloody hurt. I'm just going to protect my hand because you know I've got delicate skin. 
hands that do dishes will be soft as your face and all that. Nope, it does not want to go. I've got another solution. Don't tell the missus, it's called brute force. It's nearly all the way in. Watch this. You've got to choose the right part of the wall so you don't leave a hole in it. And you've always got to cover your bottle with something like this. You ready? Bingo bango, sugar in the gas tank. That's from The Simpsons, which some of you may have noticed. So I'm going to do the same with this one. Again, don't tell the missus. She goes by me at me. She's the one that does the painting. Are we ready? On three. One, two, three. Beautiful. <laughs> Our little secret. I've got the bungs in and I need to cage them. And because the um, wine still had yeast in suspension and because I've added extra sugar, there'll be a tiny, tiny little bit more fermentation takes place. Just a little bit. Uh, which will create CO2, which will create pressure, and without the cages, pop. So that's one done. That looks nice. I've got another four to do. It's not that exciting. I'll catch you in a minute. Okay, I've got one to crown cap. That's stood in the sink. I'm using Space Invader, Predator, whatever you want to call it. Pac-Man this week. Waka Waka. Sometimes this works a charm and sometimes it's horrible and makes me jump. Let's see what happens today. And it works a charm. I think it really depends on the bottle. This is obviously a good one. Nice. Yep, there's not wrong with that. So there we are. There's my bottles. Just going to give each one a very quick rinse. In case there's any sticky residue on the outside, I want to remove that because I've got to label them. And I don't want sticky bottles because it's not pleasant. So I've already worked out the percentage for this at 9.7%, which was the best case scenario, so I'm glad it got to that. So now I need to make the labels. So I've got my labels made up in a nice simple Microsoft Word template. I just need to print these out. So I've got my bottles dry, and it's just time to add the labels. I like them to look nice. I mean, you take pride of what's on the inside, so let's take pride on the appearance of the bottle. Although that one's a bit wonky. Never mind. And there they are. Hey from the living room folks, I'm just going to show you where my Sauvignon Blanc will be conditioning for the next two weeks. So here's my drinks cabinet and you'll notice there's a light there and you'll notice that my Sauvignon Blanc's above it. So this light comes on every evening for about three or four hours, it's due to go off soon. Uh, but this drinks cabinet will stay at a temperature above 20 for at least the next month before we get properly into autumn. It's in the living room, the living room's warm and it's high up anyway. So this will carb up here, it will condition the yeast that's in the bottles, will eat the sugar and that will result in this becoming, hopefully, fingers crossed, a sparkling Sauvignon Blanc. So it's quite a good place for conditioning as you can see I've got plenty of other bits and pieces up there. So hopefully I'll catch you in about a month's time when it comes to opening and tasting. See you then, folks. Good evening from the kitchen, folks. It's my hopefully sparkling Sauvignon Blanc opening night. As ever, I'm very excited about this one. Now, because I made this from a wine kit, and because wine kits can be a bit unreliable when it comes to carbing, I read this up on the internet. Um, I've left this to carb for two months. So this is actually two months after I made it. 
I'm looking at the bung, and I don't know if you can tell, but it looks to have raised by about a millimetre. So that's a fingers crossed hopeful thing that there is some carbonation in there, but it doesn't mean anything. I just might not have pushed it in properly. Anyway, stop talking, Stuart, and open the bloody bottle. Right, so I'm just getting the cage off. Right, am I going to get a pop? Hmm. It was a little pop, wasn't it? It wasn't very exciting. Let's have a look. Oh, we've got carbonation. Oh, we have carbonation. That's undeniable. It's not fizzy fizzy, but it's carbed. So maybe it needed to be left a bit longer. Definite mouthfeel of bubbles. And do you know what? It tastes nice. It's very medium. So the carbon sugar that I've put in there hasn't all been used up. Some of that has, le has left over and it's actually sweetened the wine. It's a very medium Sauvignon Blanc and you normally associate Sauv with being quite dry. Um, that isn't. It's very pleasant actually. Now when you look at it in the glass it's completely clear. It doesn't look like a sparkler, but trust me, in your mouth you can feel it. It's, it's more than effervescence. When you swallow it, you can feel the bubbles as it goes down. It's definitely sparkling. So it's not fizzy, but it's definitely sparkling. It's got some life in it, and I'm very happy with it. So my advice to you kids, if you're going to do a wine kit and you want it to carb, leave it for longer in the bottle at the carbon stage. So if I do this one again, I might leave it three months before I open it next time. Four months, whatever. I mean, who cares? Let's just leave it and crack on with something else. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking and start drinking. It's been lovely chatting to you. It's been another brew which I've enjoyed doing, something different. And hopefully I'm going to enjoy this bottle tonight. So cheers, folks. And I'll catch you on the next brew. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden, and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.